anticipated home game in Kroger Field history. This is a Kentucky team off to a historically great start. And an LSU team with its back against the wall. Ed Ogeron starts a string of must-win games from here to the end of the season. There is no question the star of the show this week, last week, Mark Stoops, his undefeated Kentucky program ranked in a matchup against LSU for just the first time when the Tigers weren't ranked. This is SEC Saturday Night, presented by T-Mobile. The Tigers have taken the field. They're trying to bounce back from a loss. They are 500 in conference play. Kentucky undefeated. The Wildcats make their way to the tunnel, led by Mark Stoops and a team that has learned how to win close games. Six consecutive wins by a single score. Here come the Wildcats. Ed Ogeron, kind enough to join Cole Kubelik. Cole. Coach, I know running the football is of the utmost importance in yep. this game tonight. What did you do this week to assure your team can have success with that? Different formations. Uh, put the tailback a little bit deeper in attacking formation. We're going to stay committed to the run, but we have to have success in order for us to stay ahead of the change. You, by nature, sir, are a fighter. How will you ensure that your team takes that characteristic to this game tonight? I think we had a great team meeting tonight. I think our guys are ready to fight. We have a lot of pride with the LSU Tigers. Thanks, Coach. Go Tigers. By all accounts, it's been a high-stress, high-emotion week in Baton Rouge. And here's why this game matters. Kentucky fighting for the East. They go to Georgia next week in what could be a battle of undefeated. And LSU, middle of the pack in the West. The program is coming off of arguably the best season we've ever seen in college football just two seasons ago. What a scene, what an atmosphere, and a huge game. Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, you've heard from Cole Kublik already. Ed Ogeron is a fighter. But they're going to have to fight over the next month to get to where they want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely, and it starts tonight against a really good Kentucky defense, a good Kentucky defense that's going to be stout up front. You heard Ed Ogeron, they need to run the ball better. How do you do that? Well, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. They're not going to do that. He mentioned pistol formation, getting his running backs going downhill. I expect to see a few new variations in the run game. They need it. They need more balance tonight. 125th in the country in the running game. They'll try to look for that. Meanwhile, this atmosphere is absolutely incredible. Incredible. Cole Kublik's in the middle of it all. And Cole, this is a Kentucky team. Under Mark Supes, it hasn't just built the foundation to be a winner, but now they're winning close games. Well, Tom, I think there's something to be said about a football team that finds ways and learns how to win games. Not necessarily just scoring more points. We know that's what it takes, but obviously how to close games out, how to finish games. We've all been in a couple of games in this stadium the last four or five years where Kentucky has not figured out how to do that. Mark Stoops says he has a good feeling about the leadership and the maturity of this football team when it comes to maybe finding more ways to do just that. The crowd is certainly ready here at Kroger Field under the lights against LSU and the Tigers' first trip here since 2007. Kentucky won the toss, catch have deferred. LSU will start with the football. Trey Palmer to return for LSU. <laughs> Chance Poor will get us started. The fans started early. Underway in the bluegrass. Undefeated Kentucky and LSU led by Max Johnson, a quarterback. Dad won a Super Bowl with the Buccaneers. He comes from a highly competitive sports background family. And he has had 
a good season, maybe great relative what LSU has done offensively. Second in the conference in passing touchdowns. Coming off of a good game against Auburn when he threw for over 300 yards. Jake Peets, first year offensive coordinator. The main weapon, number one, Keyshawn Butte, and he's in motion. First touch for Butte. Almost slipped through. Butte got him off to a great start last week. The opening drive against Auburn. Three catches for 99 yards. They need him to be a playmaker tonight. Yeah, and expect a heavy dose of what you just saw. Moving Kayshawn Butte from one side of the formation to the other. Different alignments and different formations. They're going to do a lot to find ways to get number one the ball. Here's the ground game. Same result. Tarion Davis Price. DeAndre Square the stop. And it's third down for LSU. Johnson having to change. Here comes the blitz. Complete for an LSU first down. A gain of 10. Excellent job by Senator Liam Shanahan. Recognition of the blitz. He bumps Ed Ingram off to be able to pick up the blitzing linebacker. That gives Max Johnson enough time to deliver the strike. You saw the stat a moment ago. The crowd impacted the game against Florida last week, trying to do the same here. Again, they stuffed the running game. It's a loss to one. Devontae Robinson. And there's one of those wrinkles that Ed O mentioned pre-game. The pistol formation with Corey Kiner, the talented true freshman aligning directly behind Max Johnson. What does that do? That allows your running back to get going downhill quicker. A lot of plays for LSU have been blown up at the line of scrimmage. Obviously didn't work there, but we're going to see much more of it tonight. First time all year they've run it. On second and long, Johnson able to find another completion. This is Jack Besh, a talented freshman from Lafayette, who picks up four. And Kentucky bringing a little green dog blitz here. Watch center Liam Shanahan pick up this block as DeAndre Square adds late. Look at him loop around right there. Pick that up along with Corey Kiner to give Max Johnson some time to find Jack Besh. Third down, six. Timeout. Kentucky. Kentucky. Well, this is a veteran Kentucky defense. Brad White, the coordinator, has nine seniors starting. And if he's seeing something brand new from LSU, timeout. he has guys that he trusts where they can add wrinkles in the middle of the game. They did it last week on the fourth down stop against Florida. They did it the week before against South Carolina. That is rare to throw something in in the middle of a game you haven't worked on. Seniors all over the field. Brad White has the utmost respect and trust in that group. You mentioned it. Fourth down against Florida. The play of the game. And he does a formation and a personnel grouping with the front and the coverage behind it that he's never done. Installed it right there on the spot. But he says, these guys know this defense inside and out. I can do things like that. So it'll be interesting to see how Brad White adjusts this defense if LSU starts to find success. They stopped Florida on eight consecutive snaps inside the 12 to win that game. Kentucky, though, as veteran as they were, only had 10 on the field a moment ago. Necessitating the timeout. Third down six, three-man rush, extra rusher coming right to that spot for Butte, and it's another first down. Now just a little spot route, common concept against zone coverage, which Kentucky's going to run a lot of, right? Besh runs the defender out, Butte slips right behind him into that void, and a quick decision by Max Johnson to pick up the first down. Another big game for Butte last week. 
He's got touchdown in seven straight games. Perfect start for Max Johnson, four for four. Play clock at three. They'll run it with Corey Kiner. Kiner having a hard time finding space, but that one ends up with four. Anthony Bradford late to get up. Cole has been a rotation at left tackle for LSU. That's not typically a position you want to see a bunch of different names at. It is not. Maybe a little bit better considering Max Johnson, a left-handed quarterback, but you want your wings handled, especially as much five-man protection as LSU runs. But Bradford has handled himself well when he's been in. Opening drive for the Tigers. Pressure from the edge. Blind side. Got him. DeAndre Square with a sack, and the ball may have come out. Kentucky football. Recovered by Josiah Hayes, forced by DeAndre Square. Common theme already, adding these linebackers late. You're going to see DeAndre Square come off the edge as he sees the running back release. That offensive line has got a bump over that's really tough to do. And you can see Josh Pascal right there, number four, occupying two offensive linemen. That's what really made this play. Number four, Pascal won't get a stat for that play, but he made that happen. He is a superstar in the making, a cancer survivor, the heart and soul of this Kentucky defense. And now Will Levis, a Penn State transfer, will have a short field to work with for the Cats. Starting running back, Chris Rodriguez, Jr. Trying to lead Kentucky to a 6-0 start for just the second time in school history. Touch pass. This is Wandale Robinson. Superstar, super speed. And he rips off eight. Uh, we mentioned it with Kayshawn Boutte. LSU's number one. Well, Kentucky's number one. Yeah, he's pretty good, too. And they're going to find a bunch of ways to get him the ball. Little rocket motion, jet sweep there. Again, he's their deep threat as well. And he'll be shadowed all night by Cordell Flott, number 25. One of the best DBs in the SEC right now. But LSU missing the best DB, Derek Stingley Jr. Out after a procedure on his foot. That'll be a run for a first down. They're also without safety. Major burns in this game. Nose tackle Joe Evans not expected to play. That LSU defense got a lot lighter when they lost some stars on that side. I will say, if there was a matchup to be missing Derek Stingley, this one is, is not the worst because Kentucky is best at the slot position. They're not super fast or super talented on the outside. So McLuthern there, he'll have a chance to warm up in this game and not be tested too much early. Levis hands it off. Kentucky back to the run game, maybe finds a yard. Neil Farrell Jr. in there with the stop. Nicole, there's not a whole lot of depth on that defensive line on the interior tonight for LSU. No, you got, we were without Joe Evans tonight, and obviously you've got four defensive tackles that LSU is going to have in this game that are going to rotate in and out. Sony Finua maybe could come in and add some depth if need be, but not as bad considering Kentucky's not going to go fast, Tom, but you'd love to have more than four rolling in and out. Ed Ogeron cut his teeth coaching the great defensive lines at Miami. Loaded with All-Americans. On second and nine. Nice little slice by Chris Rodriguez Jr. Mason Smith, big number zero on the stop for the Tigers. They're going to notice a high percentage of plays for Kentucky is going to have a shift, a motion, some kind of pre-snap movement. That is designed to steal some eyes, get eye violations, get these linebackers, get these safeties looking at areas other than their read keys and hopefully get them out of position. Run heavy early on under offensive coordinator Liam Cohen who came over from the Rams. They put C-Rod out there wide. That tells Will Levis that LSU is going to play some form of zone coverage on the back end. Trips to the right. Levis finds the hole in that zone for a first down and more. First and goal, Kentucky after the completion to Isaiah Epps. A great job by offensive coordinator Liam Cohen using Chris Rodriguez to give Will Levis the answers to the test before the play. Levis knows this is zone. By the way, they align to the running back, so he goes for the dig to the field in that void of the zone for a big first down completion. Cats without their leading receiver, Josh Ali in this one. They're going to have to find other playmakers. There's Liam Cohen. 
Great quarterback in his playing days at UMass. Rewrote the record book there for the Minutemen. Levis to the slant. Caught. Big hit. And the ball came out. We got multiple flags. Could be targeting Isaiah Cummings with the reception. They'll have to decide if he crossed the goal line. They'll look at targeting. We'll see if the ball was controlled. We got a lot going on with this SEC officiating crew comes in as a reputation for the best in the conference. David Smith, the referee. Ruling on the field because the pass is incomplete. Personal foul. Targeting number five in the That's Jay Ward at one safety spot. Told you a moment ago, Major Burns is not available in this game. They added Sage Ryan to get some run this week. They're going to have to test their depth if this targeting call holds on Ward. And Isaiah Cummings, the receiver on the outside, used to be a receiver. Actually playing tight end now, bulked up a little bit. That sure looks like a catch to me. I think that looks like a touchdown. Yeah. Did the ball cross the plane? His butt is the first thing to come down, so that side view of where the ball is as he first makes contact with the ground. And let's let's see, we're also looking at targeting here. Mickey Haddock is the replay official on site. And of course, extra help and extra eyes back in Birmingham. They got a lot to filter out on this play. What, yes. do, you, what do you see from a targeting perspective first? From a targeting, it's interesting, right? You have to first determine it is a defenseless player. So it doesn't have to be crowned of the helmet. Any forcible contact to the head or neck area to a defenseless receiver is targeting. So right there. That qualifies. That qualifies as targeting. I, I, I Honestly, I love that Jay Ward looks like he's trying to slow down. It doesn't look malicious. But again, by the book, Defenseless receiver, forcible contact. Does that angle change your mind on the targeting? Or you still think like it I said, by the book, you could say it's targeting. I would look at that and go, he held up. He didn't lunge. He didn't lurch. It didn't look like he tried to add any extra violence into that. So yeah. this is where the gray area of the targeting. If I'm a human being sitting there going, man, I don't think so. I don't see a launch. Right, as you right, said, yeah, you don't no have to check everything. Everybody, right? Right. He doesn't duck his helmet. He doesn't raise his pad level. You know, he's just trying to get in the way of a guy trying to score a touchdown. And then they had to decide, was it a catch? Was it a fumble? Was it a touchdown? After further... The incomplete pass is also... We lost the mic. It, it, good news, bad news scenario, but this went LSU's way. Targeting was taken away, and it's ruled an incomplete pass. Interesting. Maybe I was too focused on the targeting, but it, it looked a lot like a catch to me. What did I miss? Either way, you. I think that's a great call on the targeting, right? That, that's where you could go by the book, and you wouldn't be wrong. Right? You wouldn't be wrong in saying, okay, it was forcible contact, it was a defenseless receiver. But Gene Ward did a great job of trying to slow down and not add anything to that hit while still being a ball player, trying to stop a guy from scoring a touchdown. So great job all around there by the SEC crew. Second and goal. Rodriguez got touched by Mason Smith at the line of scrimmage, ends up picking up two for Farrell guy. What about Kentucky's play calling and Will Levis's strength at this point facing a key third and goal? Well, I like what they did with 84 and Isaiah Cummins trying to create a matchup issue. Right now, you have an athletic quarterback. I would try to get him on the run somewhere and or try to get Wandale Robinson moving from one side to the other and create a matchup issue as well. This is an area of the field where LSU does like to match up. Robinson, one touch so far in this drive. He's going to start at the top of your screen as they rotate now to the bottom. I think he's going to move across the formation here. Slot receiver number one right there. Levis looking for him with an out route. Levis will step up, scramble, and they wrestle him down inside the five. Huge stop for LSU's defense. Big Mason Smith out of home of Louisiana wrapped him up. 
great job all around by LSU. And they've struggled down here on the season in the red zone. They do try a man beater route with Wandale Robinson, fake bringing him across, bring him back outside, but a really good job there up front by Mason Smith to get a hold of the athletic quarterback. They're going to go for it on fourth down instead of sending the kicking team out. Kentucky 0 for 3 on fourth downs this season. Mark Stoops looking to seize momentum early on. That's a quick snap here. To throw. End zone. Touchdown! Chris Rodriguez Jr. Matt Ruffalo for the point after after a nine play 44 yard drive. It was a short field thanks to the strip sack and Kentucky's up 7-0. And it was a great job of hiding the alignment of your running back and then calling a pick play, right? So the outside receiver is going to come down and look at the alignment of Chris Rodriguez. The linebacker should be the one that's guarding him, but he's got his eyes caught up in the backfield because the ball was snapped so quickly. And that's why Chris Rodriguez was so wide open. And Kentucky here in front of a crazy crowd first on the board. Kentucky took advantage of an LSU turnover to get on the board with a Will Levis touchdown pass. Undefeated Cats with a home lead against LSU and an LSU offense that has been heavy on the pass, hard time establishing the run, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Ed Ogeron had to change offensive line coaches in the offseason, his running backs coaches away from the team. Heavy pass on first down, even though RPOs are counted in that. It's nearly nine yards to go on second down tonight. Only slightly better than average, 8.3. What kind of pressure on your QB? Oh, it's the worst as a quarterback to be in second and long, third and long. So it puts a ton of pressure on a young quarterback to force plays to happen. Not a situation you want to be in. They've got to be better on first. They'll run it on first down here. An extra effort from Corey Kiner. If you, if you notice, they just, running backs just never get going downhill, uh, right? They're always searching side to side. So really, I look at it, the offensive line has got to get a better push, got to find a way to create either an imbalance, a larger surface, some way for this offensive line to get an advantage, because just lining up and running it ain't working. Their slated starting left tackle is starting for Kentucky tonight after transferring in the offseason. Johnson eludes pressure, and he uses legs. And just short of the mark, it's going to be third and two. It's kind of an underrated part of his game. When I flip on the film, I, I see Max Johnson making a few really smart plays. He's decently athletic. Got his team in a good situation here on third down. LSU two for two on third downs tonight. Pressure coming up the middle. They pick it up. Man coverage and complete a bullet on a fantastic catch by the freshman Deion Smith, who can be electric. Boy, that's just great coverage, but even better ball placement by Max Johnson. You can see he works the right side of the field first, knows he's got one on one coverage and just elite accuracy there. Put the ball on the outside shoulder where only Deion Smith could get it. Johnson long throw to wide open. Ryan Thomas Jr. It's a pickup of 18. LSU's offense rolling here through the air. Look, when you play a Kentucky defense that wants to sit back in zone coverage, they're going to give you these throws more often than not. But there's a reason. These are pretty tough to complete. You're throwing that ball 35, 40 yards to the sideline. Great timing and a great route. It's a top 10 defense for Kentucky, but they are pulling, trying to pull off a massive line change here. Josh Williams now the running back. Butte touch pass. And Josh Pascal got in the backfield and brought him down. This dude's making money every game. Watch the eyes 
here of Josh Paschal. Look at this. He's got his eyes inside. He knows something's coming back to him. He stays put, doesn't get distracted, and makes a heck of a play in the background, in the backfield there, bringing down Kayshawn Butte. Second and long. Flag on the play. Catch made by Besh. Well, looks like it's going to be a holding call on LSU. I'll tell you what, Josh Pascal is giving this LSU offensive line everything they need. Or a lot more than they need, I should say. <laughs> Josh Pascal is a superstar. We watch as Josh Allen developed into a first round NFL pick. Pascal doing the same. There is no foul play for a chop block. He was above the waist. The result of the play was a completed pass. Second down. Pascal, by the way, heard from Josh Allen this week. He said he was so excited about the Florida game, he called me and he talked for 15 minutes nonstop before I could get a word in edgewise. Josh, we you feel your excitement, big guy. But Josh, don't you got a game to prep for? <laughs> He's prepping for this one. Late sub for Kentucky again. LSU perfect on third downs. Max Johnson perfect eight for eight start. They will run it. And on third down, Tyron Davis Price is able to pick up three. And decision time for LSU. Boy, kind of in that no man's land, right? Cade York's a heck of a field goal kicker, but seeing as how Kentucky went for it early, I feel like this is the right decision. Keep your offense out there and try to go blow for blow with Kentucky right now. And likely in York's range, he's got a massive leg. Fourth and one. They pass it here. I might watch for a mesh concept. All these receivers crossing each other over the ball. Empty backfield. Whistles before the play. LSU used a timeout. Interesting development before that snap. Multiple long lookovers from Max Johnson to the sideline. Something Ed Ogeron said he wanted to get away from. Decision time again for the Tigers. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. America's largest, fastest, and most reliable 5G network. And in part by Farm Ridge. Grab a snack. Well, these two teams haven't met often, but when they have, it has been something to remember. The Bluegrass Miracle, the play, dash right, 93 Berlin. Marcus Randall with the winner. The losing coach got a Gatorade back. What does LSU decide to do? Fourth and a long one. This will tell you a lot about what they think of their run game and how confident they are. Called a pass before that play was blown dead because of the timeout. See if they stick with it. To throw. And short of the marker anyway, but Besh couldn't hold on to it. So. I don't love the call. I really don't. As a quarterback, that quick flat route, because it's so close to you, it's at a weird angle. It really closes the window in the area you have to throw. Look at the angle here. With the tight coverage, there's not many places you can put that football to give him a chance to turn the corner there. Obviously, just trying to outflank the defender with Bash really quick, but I'll tell you what, don't think they're very confident in the run game. Keishon Butte had been in the medical tent for LSU, so he had been limited, but they obviously love the matchup they're getting with Besh. Levis pulls it back, will draw it, and gets stopped after gain of one. What are Will Levis's strengths? Well, he's extremely talented. I mean, physically, he's got a crazy arm. I was throwing the ball with him yesterday. And I say, hey, how far can you throw it? He goes, ah, you know, a little crow hop, probably 80. And I'm like, excuse me, what? 80? I backed up to 60, and he flicked it like you did a dinner roll to me last <laughs> night. And it was like perfect spiral, 60 yards. I'm going, that must be nice. Huge hole. First down run to midfield by Chris Rodriguez Jr. It goes for 17. Boy, watch. 
this action in here. Great job by the center there, Luke Fortner, to control the nose guard, and that's what really opened up that big hole. As you see, multiple Kentucky offensive linemen climbing to the next level. Yeah, Elon Cox, 15 yards downfield, couldn't find yeah. a guy. That's always a good sign. You've got to find somebody. I think those big boys get out in space. They get a little nervous, though. Rodriguez over 2,000 yards, 10th in Kentucky history. Wide open again. This is Justin Rigg. And everything Liam Cohen is dialing up is working for the Cats. Boy, watch the tight end leak up as they fake the pitch to the running back. Really puts that outside linebacker in a bind. Look at Micah Baskerville running downhill. That tight end is his responsibility, but he's got his eyes in the background backfield because of that fake pitch. I tell you what, little salute to Eddie Grand there. Oh, could be. A little wide pop pass. Uh -huh. Eddie back in the building working for Kentucky. It's something that we saw from him for the last few years. Liam Cohen tipping his hat there to Eddie Grand. Straight ahead, it's Bowl. Pardon me. They're going deep into the roster now in Kentucky. Able to kind of march down the field after a really good start through the air for Will Levis, who's four for five. And that time, Jatan McLean, who we expected to get some run, is doing so here early on. First quarter in the books. Undefeated Kentucky looking to add to a 7 nothing lead. Grover Field has come alive again here in Lexington. The defense has led to a short field and an early catch score. Fifth play of the drive for Kentucky as we start the second quarter. Kabashi smoke now in a tailback. Play action. Levis off balance. Top touchdown. Wondell Robinson. Perfect game right now. And you ask Tom, Will Levis' strengths? One of those? Yeah, the arm strength. Throwing off platform. Yeah. Navigating the pocket there. Didn't have his base underneath him, but still threw an absolute dive to Wandale Robinson. Matt Ruffalo, point after. Good. Kentucky has opened up a 14-0 lead in front of a dessert Kroger field under the lights in Lexington. Will Levis has thrown for a couple. He's off to a sensational start tonight, and the Cats lead it 14-0. Gordon Rogers, Cole Kublik, and Lexington, Kentucky, where the 16th-ranked Cats have a 14-0 lead on LSU. The Nebraska transfer. Wondell Robinson on just his second touch of the game is able to find it in the end zone. Put the Cats up two scores. Will Levis is thrown for two. Trey Palmer back to receive. There is no doubt the pressure is on this LSU program, especially down two scores here. And you think about where they've been to where they are now. It wasn't just a national championship season. It was a historically great season. Elite at Ogeron with a contract extension, but they've won just eight of their last 15. Cole talked to him pregame, and we talked to him yesterday about it. He's a fighter. He's not going down without a fight. He compared this game to the 2017 Florida game, coming off a loss at home to Troy. They won by one on the road in the swamp. They beat a ranked Auburn team the next week. They would win six of their last seven. They're going to have to pull off something like that. But the hill is a steep climb down two scores tonight. Armani Goodwin picks up four. That was a great start, right? We talked about second down, second and longs. Your goal on first down is four yards, right? Pick that up on the ground. Get your quarterback and get your play caller, Jake Peets, in a comfortable situation where he can go run or pass. Peets came over from the Panthers. They got room on the edge this time. And a very physical run by the freshman Goodwin. 
as he gains five. Goodwin's one of those guys that's going to get into the mix as well. He's probably the best pass catcher out of the backfield. Got a little more juice, a little more sideline to sideline than Corey Kiner and Ty Davis Price. But that is one thing. We saw the graphic there, the 2019 offense. The biggest difference to me is the lack of using the running back through the air. Almost completely absent this year. It was a huge piece with Clyde Edwards Alaire in 2019. NFL running back, three first round picks at wide receiver, an NFL tight end, and the Heisman winner. Johnson, deep shot, Palmer, and defended well. No flags by Quandre Mosley. Well, well, that's a big miss. You can see there, Trey Palmer behind the coverage. That's just a bad underthrow by Max Johnson. And we were down on the field. He's got a great arm. Sure. I think it surprised me. I watched film. I was like, his arm looks okay, but he's got a really strong arm. Just didn't look confident, didn't step into that one because Palmer had a step for a touchdown. He's 8 of 10 tonight. They go back to the ground game at Corey Kiner. Thrown down behind. Now he spins his way free. Long run for no gain for Kiner. In fact, it'll be a loss of one. Trevin Wallace turned him around on the far side, and Kiner ran out of room. Wow. Just look at the pursuit here by this Kentucky defense. Outside the hash on the right, all the way outside the hash on the left, sideline to sideline. And you see Jordan right there finishing it off. Third and long. Watch Jack Bash here. Blitz over the middle, over through Bash. He was open. Bad pass or bad timing? It's a tough pass, right? Because Max Johnson is trying to get it up and over the underneath defenders. You're going to see the linebackers here right in the throwing lane of where Max Johnson wants to go. So he's got to get that ball up and down. Just put a little bit too much air on it. It's a great route. It's exactly where the ball should go and missed it by about a foot and a half. Avery Atkins gets it nearly blocked. How did that sneak past? Robinson with a fair catch inside the 15. That was a 53-yard punt. Atkins somehow got it away clean. Oh, that is a big loss. Yeah, last time they trailed October 17th, last year against Georgia. What a thriller in Oxford today. Old Miss over Arkansas, 52-51. A fantastic day in college football continues tonight. LSU needs big plays. They got a big guy to do it. Cole Mason Smith is just, he's just different up front. No, he's a Vince McMahon guy. When you walk up next to him, you just think, okay, that guy could leave early and go to professional wrestling right now if he wanted to. He's that big, that long. And when you get somebody who has that frame that can move out to end in a four down scheme, you know the athleticism is there. Now, we won't see him there as much tonight, like you mentioned earlier, Tom, with the depth, the defensive tackle, and some of the issues that LSU's having there. But pad level is usually an issue. Striking the block is usually an issue, and Mason Smith does not have those problems for a young football player. And a nice job there, keeping his feet, nice pace, slid flat down the line of scrimmage, stayed at home after not being blocked to be able to read that play and make the stop. Damone Clark came off the field after being tended to by the athletic training staff. Motion to Ogeron, he took a shot to the head, and now concussion protocol will commence for Clark, senior from Baton Rouge and key linebacker. Second down, 14. The same little drill I did to you, to you after Ruby's last night. Right? <laughs> Could be. I believe I failed. Kavasi smoke breaks free. Out to the 40. A run of 32 for Kavasi smoke. You see great push up the center, and then Neil Farrell just picks the wrong side, or no, excuse me, I think that was Mike Jones there. 19 hops over the top, and Cavassier Smoke goes right underneath for a big game. Cats averaging better than six yards a carry. Another hole. Wondell Robinson has two touches in this game. One of them was for a touchdown. Cole, you talked to Mark Stoops before the game. 
What is his role as a decoy tonight? We talked to Liam Cohen about it a little bit yesterday, and he said, yeah, I could see us using him a little bit more as a decoy because the movement, the motion, the window dressing, the eye violations that Jordan has been talking about tonight have been such an issue. But Coach Stoops stopped me on the field. He said, hey, hey, don't, don't get it twisted. He's getting his touches tonight, all right? <laughs> don't worry about that. We will force feed him the football. Junior from Frankfort, Kentucky, back home in the Commonwealth. To throw, strong arm, back foot, and to no man's land. Tell you what, I love that play right there. Why? Because when you watch, looks like Kennard's down on the field there. When you watch Will Levis, decision making has been an issue. Turn the football over, he's thrown at least an interception every single game. And so Liam Cohen will dial up shot plays. But a great offensive coordinator once told me, a shot called doesn't mean a shot taken. If it's not there, don't force it. Don't risk a turnover. Throw it away, check it down, and let me call it again next drive or in a few plays. Looming major news for Kentucky. Darian Kennard, 32nd consecutive start tonight. The right tackle injured on the field for the Cats with Kentucky up 14-0. Dari, thanks. In the medical tent is the right tackle, Darren Kennard. It looked really bad at the beginning. The ending is a little bit better. Watch what happens to big number 70, middle of your screen. Kabashi Smoke collides with him after Mason Smith drove him back. And who was it that was driving him back? Mason Smith. Yeah. We were just talking about for LSU, but how about this right here? And he what everybody sitting at home didn't get to hear is the noise, the standing ovation, the cheers that he got for running off the field. They know how important he is to this team. All-American last season for Kentucky squad. Third and three. Oh, wow. Nowhere to go. Damone, Damone Clark back on the field. It's a loss of five as he eats up Donut Drennan. A little bit of a read play here. I believe there should be a run or even a quarterback draw off this. Levis didn't see that Damone Clark saw that the whole way. He ran with the motion immediately. That's one that Levis has got to tuck down. First punt tonight for Colin Goodfellow. Trey Palmer. To receive for LSU. Wow. Ball's bouncing Kentucky's way tonight. Scoreboard reads big blue, 14-0. Let's take a look at Fansville, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Folks, the party really started last Saturday. It continued throughout the weekend. Keeneland's fall meet going strong. They started yesterday. Folks uh, on both sides, birth uh, blue and white, purple and gold, going out to watch the ponies and coming to watch some football. And uh, there's been some brown water poured around these parts this weekend, I believe. Yeah, a few adult beverages passed around outside the stadium. I tell you what, I haven't felt this type of energy in Lexington, and we come here a lot yeah. in a long, long time. Handoff to Davis Price, and he finds 14 on first down. So they, they've had some quality runs on first down last two possessions. Yeah, and interesting here, getting into a tight end formation there, as you see the tight end pulling a guard from the backside. Jack Mashburn, the tight end there, that was the lead blocker. One thing that Pete said, we might start to use these guys a little bit more, maybe even dip into 12 personnel at times to get our run game going. And how rare is that given what LSU has done so far this season? Yeah, very rare. This is a team that likes to spread you out, go five-man protection up front, get five receivers eligible and out into routes. But again, Coach O has wanted more balance from this offense. How rare is it, Tom? 3.8% of the time for LSU. 13 plays the entire season. They've been in 12 personnel. None so far tonight. Leading five. LSU finds four from Davis Price. Trayvon Ripka in on the stop for Kentucky. Hey, here's your first big. snap of 12 personnel tonight. And to bring Keishon Butte on the field. Yep, 12 personnel. Butte is going to be down at the bottom of your screen. 
Two tight ends, Colt Taylor and Jack Mashburn. They will run it, need one, got two. Cole, the offensive line for LSU has caught a lot of flack recently tied into the lack of success in the running game. Uh, they just won that one. No, absolutely. The split zone is going to help. The tight end coming across the formation is going to steal the eyes of the linebacker, but just a nice push, but really just a good cut there by Davis Price as well. Understanding time to get north and south. Can't dance a lot in the backfield on third and one. to throw. Johnson steps up, goes down! Another sack. This time it's Octavius Oxendine. Oxendine on the right side of your screen. Initially double team, but just keeps working there. And Chase Hines lets him go, thinking he has a little bit of help. You see Josh, Josh Pascal there splitting a the double team. I mean, this defensive front for Kentucky is playing with like their hair's on fire right now. The timing of that blitz made it work. Johnson pressured again. And that's complete, a long one, but short of the marker. Jare Jenkins pick up a 15, set up third and one. Do they run it here? Looks more like two now. I like the tempo here. Something Coach O was preaching to Jake Beats as well. Find some tempo at times. Get the line quickly. Four-man rush out of the backfield. Drop. Corey Conner had the first down in front of him. Yusuf Corker, the veteran. if it looked like a miscommunication or Corey Kiner missed a step there, but watch this. Watch a little hesitation as he gets outside. He loses it in his screen there, but as he turned, he looked a little out of sorts there. I think that led to the incompletion because that ball is right where it needs to be. Corey Kiner just took his eyes off it. Avery Atkins just snuck one past Vito Tisdale last time. See if Kentucky comes after it again. They will not. And it's a banger inside the 10. Wow, what a checkup. 54-yard punt. Dontre Kirkland downs it at the two-yard line. Atkins does his job. Will be a long field for Kentucky. The punter flexing on him. They're 10-7 Aggies, Tom. Wow, what a game. Here, Kentucky backed up, first and ten from the blue. And he'll try to create some space. With a handoff to the tight end, or pardon me, with Chris Rodriguez running behind the tight end. Alabama came into that game having allowed three first quarter points all season. Ten tonight. Maybe Jimbo and Daryl Dickey are figuring something out with Zach Calzada. They have the talent. This is a big prove-it game for Jimbo. Good to know LSU brought the tubas on the trip. Second down five. Wow, Levis had it the whole time. He fooled everybody. It's an 11-yard gain before B.J. Ojolari found him. Yeah, he was pretty good it. at this at Penn State. Yeah, just reading the defensive end here. You're going to see Ojolari. Easy read for Levis, trusting his speed. Ojolari works down the line of scrimmage. Great little wrinkle to the Sean McVay offense, having a dynamic athlete at quarterback. From shotgun to under center now, Robinson, receiver near side. And they'll hand it off. It's a huge hole, Rodriguez. Kentucky just gashing LSU in the run game. 21 yards. On who they run right behind, Darian Kennard, right tackle. Right there. Get rolled up a little bit there, but setting the edge. And Chris Rodriguez with a great read to get up in vertical. Everything seemingly working for Kentucky right now. It's new. This offense is new for Will Levis. Operating under center versus the shotgun and move back to the shotgun now is also new for Kentucky. Or pardon me, for Levis. They do it more often than anybody in the SEC. 
There's Drennan. What, what difference does that make to a quarterback? It's a lot of difference. I mean, just the the art of taking a snap is different, but I think it plays biggest into the play action, right? Quarterbacks in high school and college and Levis in high school and at Penn State, they're used to the zone read where their eyes are always on the defense, Yeah. right? Now you get under center. You turn your back to the defense for a good second and a half. So you have to be really good pre-snap at identifying the coverage and then very quickly when you turn your head around at reconfirming and making decisions. Very difficult. Levis is still growing in that, but trending in the right direction. Second and eight, back to the shotgun here in the run game snuffed. It was funny, we were talking about it with him yesterday, and he said, yeah, actually, first team unit, I come out and work with Luke Fortner. I go under center, I fumbled my first snap. There's not much more that makes a coach really angry than a fumbled under center snap. I tell you what. I don't think I've ever heard my coaches yell so loud when that happens. There's yeah. nothing that makes a center more angry. Yeah. <laughs> it's always quarterback's fault, right? Nope. Absolutely. Always the center's fault. Sweaty oh. butt, bad grip. Now we're getting personal. Most centers I know have a sunny disposition. <laughs> Five man rush. They go to the outside. Robinson couldn't shake. Jay Ward, it's a gain of two. I mean, while we're on the subject, I don't want to go into too far of a detail as you roll your eyes next to me, Tom, but <laughs> the center's butt gets really sweaty through the course of a game, and I used to put a towel on my center's butt and change it almost every drive so I could dry my hands off. You're I not am... talking about our center working tonight in a sideline capacity. <laughs> You're talking about in-game. Yes, I'm talking about in-game down there on the field. I may or may not have changed pants during September yes. games at halftime. LSU may be lined up offside here on fourth and six. It's hard to grip it and rip it 60 yards downfield when you got a little too much butt sweat on. LSU was offside. It'll be a five-yard penalty coming after the punt. Would Mark Stoops go for it here at midfield? Watch just on the near side of the center. One of the LSU linemen was a good head and shoulders over the line of scrimmage. I don't think so, though. The way this defense is playing, three minutes left in this half. Oh, yeah. Right there. So anxious to get in and maybe get a piece of it. LSU usually, being aggressive. Go ahead. Usually you just want to look about five feet to your right at where the ball is. and Good. John Trey Kirkland. Let's see what uh, Stoops has decided. Looks like he's sending the offensive yeah, unit back is. out there. I mean, he I'm went for it on fourth down on their opening possession, got a touchdown out of it. Instead of taking the three, this is an aggressive mindset from Mark Stoops tonight. Offside on the defense, number 13. Five-year-old penalty will be a force from the previous spot. Replay fourth down. We talk a lot about analytics in college football, especially if you watch an Ole Miss game. This is something Lane Kiffin would do without thinking twice about it. Mark Stoops, defensive minded coach, a little bit more traditional when it comes to going for it on fourth down. Yeah, and the traditional conservative approach, as I just said, would be to punt it. Your defense is playing great. Don't want to give them a short field to score right before half, especially since they're going to get the ball after yeah. half. But I tell you what, everything has been working for Kentucky so I love the confidence by Mark Stoops the play called he like fourth and short run the football give it to 24 I'd hand it off to the right here just like you did two plays ago Rodriguez came in averaging six yards a carry averaging seven tonight Levis center center LSU's loaded it up to try to get him to jump Who moved? Was it Mason Smith? Or was it the left side of the line of Kenneth Horsey? There may have been a little hitch in the middle of that offensive line. It also looked like LSU maybe lurched forward and the Kentucky offensive lineman tried to reach and touch him, right? You touch him if they reach forward over the line of scrimmage there and you can get that false start call, or excuse me, the offsides call. Mark Stoops and his lieutenant, Vince Merrill. What's the call? False start on the offense, number 79. It's Fortner, the center. Mark Stoops, not happy. Oh, 
Wow. It was uh, a lurch from Fortner after the movement. Yeah. Defensive lineman kind of triggered that, though. Oh, He's in the neutral the zone. Ball. Yeah, that defensive lineman's in the neutral zone. Causes the center to flinch. I'd argue that probably should have been offsides. Eight false starts for Florida last week. The crowd's certainly a difference maker. And Kentucky's going to use a timeout. Kentucky, that's it. Emotional, high-intensity game. Kentucky up 14-0. Regions halftime report Bama down two scores guys will show it to you wild day in the SEC how do you describe what Kentucky's doing to LSU uh, bully big blue football they're running the ball well they've got over 100 yards in the first half uh, LSU can't stop them. that's what we're seeing so far that is what we're seeing here 14 zip there but we'll keep you posted A&M up 17 7 guys my darn thanks Zach comes out at seven for seven 105 yards and two touchdowns Jeez. That was unexpected. Fair catch taken at 14. More football action in 10 seconds. <laughs> SEC Saturday night, Kroger Field, Lexington, Kentucky, undefeated. Kentucky 5-0, 3-2 LSU. Max Johnson was 8 for 8 to start. Since then, one for five with change. Oh, it's really been the pressure from this Kentucky defensive front, condensing the pocket, getting hits on Max Johnson. Right now, they're giving this offensive line fits. Sacked him twice, once forced to fumble. Big room outside and churning through. Davis Price with the high knees, gain a nine. Well, you see the commitment to the run for LSU on first down, especially outside of their first possession. Yeah, and I think that's been the difference, right? Getting in second in shorts. That helped early on when they hit a couple runs. That helped Max Johnson be more efficient. Edge pressure picked up. Deep ball. Double coverage. Incomplete. Trying to find Palmer on another deep one. Cedric Dort was back there for Kentucky with Tyrell Asian. Asian a senior. Corker a senior. Dort a senior. The veteran. Kentucky back in. This is a huge third down here, right? LSU will have the opportunity to get the ball after half. So getting the drive together here, getting points on the board before half, will be huge. Third and one. They pick it up with Davis Price. Who kept churning in the end. Net at 12. That's a nice push by Austin Geculus. 76 over on the right side of his line. Had a couple big blocks tonight, especially in the run game. So getting a good push. He's a guy that sort of in and out of the lineup a little bit early in the season for LSU. But a crafty veteran brings a lot of value to this LSU front. Fourth year starter, right tackle, got a national championship to his name. Again to Davis Price. This time stoned at the line of scrimmage by DeAndre Square. You know what we haven't seen a ton of from LSU, only a couple times, is the look to the sideline. Uh huh. The check with me. Right? That is the Joe Brady system. That is what it was predicated on with Joe Burrow and Brady in 2019. Coach O wants him to get away from that a little bit. Wants him to call it and haul it. Get out there, be confident in it, and run it. It's worked some tonight, but other times they probably could have used an adjustment. Pressured again. Held on to it for a long time, and Johnson pays the price. Oxendine took him down. And partly just a coverage sack there. Great coverage on the outside. You can see Max Johnson looking, looking, looking. Great hit by Oxidine there. You can't ask your offensive line to block for that long. There is a flag. Intentional grounding. Lots of down. All the places to slow the foul also includes a loss of down. Third down.
coverage on the outside. Look at Kentucky passes things off really well and never left the didn't leave the box. pocket. It was in the direction of a receiver, but way short. Obviously, just trying to get rid of the football. Jackson fires the bullet. Almost picked. Palmer's been his deep receiver. Agent was there. You get yourself in third and longs like this. Watch 23 right here. Watch his eyes. Just looking at Max Johnson the entire time. Max Johnson's really lucky that didn't get picked off. You get in bad third down situations. Kentucky plays what they love to play. Zone coverage keeps eyes on the quarterback. Johnson just won for his last six after an eight for eight start. Here's Wondell Robinson. One versus one. That is Mute on the punt coverage team. After our game tonight, it's SEC football final. We'll take you back to the guys in the studio. Dari, Chiz, Doring, and Watson. Biggest stories of the day, breakdown of all the games, including Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss with a huge home win. Stop at Arkansas on the last play. Thanks to Wheels Up, help, helping make travel easier for Jordan to get from SEC Nation in the morning. So our Saturday night game every week. Where are you That's going next week, you know? I don't know yet. We'll be in Knoxville, Knoxville for what be should a, be a shootout between Ole Miss and Tennessee. There might be a few points in that game. Could be. Bring your cop. <laughs> Late night. Robinson for the screen. What a delightful young man to spend time with yesterday. Back home in the Commonwealth. You know, 2018 Kentucky had this historic season. They won 10 games. That year he was Kentucky Mr. Football. But there was very little interest in coming to play in what was this Kentucky offense. Instead, he went to play for Scott Frost in Nebraska, and he was very, very good for the Huskers. Very good, but also played a completely different position. Was mostly a running back out of the backfield. Not something that he wants to do really now or at the next level. So coming back to Kentucky with Liam Cohen, Will Levis, this was the fit for him. On the draw, plenty of room for Kavashi. Smoke again. He's got the first down. 16 seconds left in the half. Kentucky has one timeout remaining. Remember, Mark Stoops used a timeout after that flag on the last possession before they put the punt team out there. Sure Kentucky, would like to have a timeout in his pocket now. And I think that timeout was kind of just to give the refs an earful a little bit about that call. Like to have it now. 16 seconds left. The ball's on the 40-yard line. You need a big chunk play. And then you need to get back on the ball and clock it. And you already talked about it. Will Levis has an arm for yeah. days. I mean, Uncle Rico arm. Oh, he could throw it over them, their mountains, let alone out of this stadium if he wanted to. So <laughs> no doubt they're in range for a Hail Mary, but he's been perfect nearly today. And Liam Cohen has dialed up an unbelievable game plan. You see throwing a touchdown to Chris Rodriguez, another touchdown to Wandale Robinson. He's moved Levis outside the pocket. The run game has had a variety of different looks. And seemingly everything's been clicking tonight for Kentucky. Eight of ten through the air for 76 yards of Kentucky team that yes is undefeated, but they're minus nine in the turnover margin. That's crazy. That seems to have been fixed at least for the first half tonight. I, I would I would love to see the very short list of schools that have ever been five and zero with a minus nine turnover margin. Well, they were clean last week against Florida. But still a lot of room of growth uh, in, for growth with this offense. Time for last in the country in turnover margin. Out of timeouts. We go play action. Levis steps up, heaves downfield. Robinson incomplete. Wow. Jay Ward, Cordell flat the coverage. I tell you what, uh -oh. Levis comes up limping a little bit. I'll tell you what, the coverage was perfect. This throw was just flat out stupid. Look at how accurate this throw is. I mean, right on the money, but an unbelievably difficult catch for Wandell Robinson. With coverage, Jay Ward right on top of him. I'm down here in that end zone. The ability of Robinson to just locate that football was pretty impressive. Eight seconds left in the half. 
trap for a quick out route. One of the things we talked with Will about yesterday was his development as a passer, being able then to be pinpoint accurate Reading the defensive backs and knowing, am I going over left shoulder, right shoulder, inside or outside, to try and give my guy a chance to make a play. Yeah, it's the nuances of playing the position, right? And also, that's developing chemistry. Yeah. Knowing where these receivers want the football, how they work in space, who you can throw the ball over the top to, who you need to put it a little more on directly. And here, this is a play you'll see him scramble around a little bit. These three receivers at the top of your screen going to all go vertical and should try to chunk one down to the end zone. Cummings, Epps, and Harris. LSU, their second. This Along with Wondell Robinson, who's uh, shared some words with the LSU defensive backs. So he's got the he's got the arm to get there. But you've got a, a guy with like Rondell Robinson who's so tough to bring down and incredibly quick. Are we going straight Hail Mary here? Or could we do some underneath stuff when you got a weapon like Robinson? Yeah, two schools of thought there, right? That formation kind of leans toward a play we used to call rebound, right? Three receivers on one side, they go plant themselves in the end zone. The receiver at the bottom of the screen is kind of playing and trailing. The other three, you just throw it up for a jump ball. Or the other school of thought is you send all those receivers deep. You send one guy on a dig route, trying to hope that he can catch the ball in space, make a few guys miss, and, and maybe score a touchdown. LSU, Bluegrass Miracle didn't throw it to the end yeah. zone. Honestly, as a quarterback, I like the dig route better because I don't want to chunk it up and hopefully throw an interception. It's a low percentage. I'd rather give my guy a chance to break a few tackles, get a high percentage throw, because they'll give it to you and see if something can happen. Did you ice down after throwing with Levis yesterday? Oh, my gosh. I tried to, I was like, hey, let me try to toss it back to you at 60. That was a bad idea. All right, let's see what they have drawn up here. Wendell Robinson, number one, will be in the middle of that bunch formation at the top. Tay Tay Crooms, big speed wide receiver by his lonesome at the bottom. Pressure. Levis will be swallowed up to end the half. DJ Ojalari with the sack for LSU. Great atmosphere here tonight at Kroger Field and coming up here shortly. You can watch a live performance from the Kentucky Wildcat marching band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Mark Stoops went for it on fourth down for the first touchdown for Kentucky. He was going to go for it on fourth and one in midfield before a penalty took it away. And he's had some issues with this great SEC officiating staff tonight, including the false start penalty on his center, Luke Fortner, before what would have been a fourth and one. He's with Cole. Coach, the timeout there after the fourth down decision, was that to do what you were just doing there, further the conversation with the officials? I just wanted clarity on a few things. Yeah, we uh, that was a critical moment in the game, and uh, yeah, I just want some clarity. You told me on the field before the game, we got to play clean football to win tonight. One penalty, no turnovers. How important it is to continue that in the second half to get a win? Very important. Once again, I think defensively we're playing extremely hard. We're executing pretty good, giving up a little bit in the run game, but they give explosive wide receivers, so picking our poison there. And offensively, I thought we started uh, extremely sharp early and uh, we stalled out a little bit here late in the, sec in the second quarter. Thanks coach. Thank you. Kentucky trying to go 6-0 for the first time since 1950. Will Levis has been sensational tonight. Kentucky with a 14-0 lead on a desperate LSU team. Let's get you back to the studio. Here's Dari. So the spectrum in this game tonight, Kentucky up 14 to nothing. They have a chance to go 6-0, stay undefeated. LSU with his back against the wall. A lot of things going right for the Cats tonight, not so much for LSU. Yeah, and I think if you thought of Kentucky 5-0, you maybe didn't think, how good is this team actually? I tell you what, they're answering that question on both sides of the football. Everything going right on offense and on defense. That defensive front has been all over Max Johnson and LSU. Cole Kublik's down on the field. You talk with Ed Ogeron. What's his state of mind tonight? He's not happy, Tom. I asked him about what we might see different from the offense or what he would like to see different from the offense in the second half. He said, don't throw it to the running back. Don't throw it to the freshman running back on third down. Try to find a way to block and open up the run game and protect the quarterback. Other than that, he said, I'm good. We got all these talented receivers. How about let's throw to them? And when they're open, let's try to hit them. How'd you like to play, Mrs. Lincoln? Max Johnson ended the first half one for seven after a fantastic start. LSU will kick away. Let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Zaxby's. 
LSU held 120 total yards. Kentucky did not turn the ball over. How about that one right there? I mean, Kentucky has had their You're have way to say on which the ground. Your pen didn't work. Oh, it didn't. 118 yards. Okay. On the ground, right here. Let me try this again. Bam! That, that was one really right good. there. You're too young for picture pages, but you would have been beautiful. And for LSU, uh, just generate explosive plays, right? Coach O said it. Got a talented wide receiver. You've got to find a way to get explosive plays downfield. Keyshawn Butte targeted three times. That's it. Here's Wondell Robinson trying to get into the flow. And the Frankfurt, Kentucky native picks up four. Boy, how fast is Will Levis's release? I tell you, when you watch him throw the ball, that ball comes out so fast. That's so important on those quick throws to the sideline to get the guys the ball in space. The quicker they get the ball, the more time they have to make a move and make somebody miss. Talking with Mark Stoops this week, and the, the offense has been underperforming, but he said the bones of what we want this to be are in place. It's just a matter of now executing, and they've done it so far tonight. Long handoff. Here's Rodriguez. Big run past midfield. 22-yard gain. I watch the right side of this offensive line. Both tight ends getting in the mix here, sealing the edge so Chris Rodriguez could get vertical. 12 personnel right there, actually 13 personnel with Isaiah Cummings, who's also a tight end. Kentucky getting heavy and having their way on the ground. One running back, three tight ends, five plays at 20 yards or more for Kentucky tonight. Cavassier smoke gashing. There's five on first down. Yeah, that's that outside zone play that I thought Liam Cohen would build this offense around. We watched Sean McVay's offense with the Rams. They built that around. It opens up the bootlegs, your heavy play actions, your throwbacks, your screens, your counters, things of that nature. But it looked as though they had tightened it. We asked Liam Cohen about it a little bit. He said, yeah, we sort of narrowed down that aiming point a little bit to get it more close to the hip of our tackle because we feel like it gives us more advantage to be able to run the football inside. We got good running backs to run it between the tackles. Here's another one. Kavashi Smoke bullies his way for a first down. Oh, just look at the double team on the right side of this offensive line. Luke Sportner, Eli Cox. Watch this double team right here. How much movement they get at the point of attack. And that's exactly where Kavashi Smoke goes. And he only needed a few and he picked them up. It's essentially like you and I were demoing this morning on SEC Nation, Jordan. You get enough movement on that outside zone play at the point of attack, the linebacker's going to make himself wrong because you're in his lap. Difference is these guys are wearing sleeves. Now first and ten. Levis going to take off himself. And he will bounce off for a first down and a spin move. Will Levis motors his way to the five. 34-yard rumble. With a 230 pound QB. Are you kidding me? I'll tell you what, this kid's got some juice. Now, I got to hang out with him yesterday. He is so much bigger in person when you're standing next to him than he looks on film or he looks from the stands. He is tough to bring down and he has got juice. Look at that. From Madison, Connecticut, by way of Penn State, he's a huge. New England sports fan, Patriots, Red Sox all the way through. For the Boomers, when I say juice, it means he's got some explosiveness, some speed. Thank you. Some juice, Tom. Here's Rodriguez. The shove to the goal line. The rugby scrum stops just inside the one. Damone Clark is there. This is a pivotal goal line opportunity for LSU's defense. Ed Ogeron knows the heat is on him. He knows what's coming in terms of the schedule, and they're in danger of falling behind 21-0. Second and goal. QB sneak. No signal, and Levis stop. Short, I suppose. In! Touchdown! Kentucky! Damone Clark 
Pulls a Choi Palomalu going up and over the top, but just once again, great push. That entire drive, this Kentucky offensive line made a statement, an attitude, a nastiness to that drive. Is he in? I tell you what, from the other angle, it did look like the ball crossed. They're going to look at it, though. That is so hard to decipher from a replay booth standpoint because all of the bodies that are in there. It's going to be tough to tell when and if he's down. And that view right along that goal line I thought was good, and it did look like the ball grazed the white line. Watch him come through at the bottom of your screen right there. Elbow, ball, right there. Yep. Line is right here. That's a touchdown. Just has to break the plane. And it does so. It was a run heavy drive for Kentucky. Started with a four yard completion of Wondell Robinson, then six carries for 71 yards the rest of the way. Tell you what, Kentucky tonight, they're putting the rest of the SEC and especially the SEC East and the Georgia Bulldogs on alert because they are physical, they play sound defense. This is a complete football team that's putting on a show right now. Touchdown. No Mike needed the crowd reaction enough. The largest deficit of the year for LSU. This place is bananas. <laughs> Matt Ruffalo, the kicker. Will Levis' weekend better would be a Red Sox win against the Rays tomorrow. This guy has been magnificent tonight. 10 of 13 through the air. He rumbles his way and then powers into the end zone. Waka Flocka was live and in person last week, and his lyrics over the Stadium PA tonight. It is a party, and it's going to be even more so if Kentucky can hold on to this 21 and nothing lead against LSU. No return. Ed Ozron's got a national championship under his belt with an amazing season two years ago. Last year, COVID season, they fell on hard times and trying to find a hard time riding the ship. He has been great after a loss, 14 and one in his time as the LSU head coach. He is a great motivator. But execution was lacking last week against Auburn, especially on the offensive side. And a big stop after a gain of two on Armani Goodwin. He's been adamant that LSU needed to establish the run. He mentioned to Cole at halftime, we don't need to be throwing the ball to our freshman running back on third down. They need to start airing it out. They need to find number one, Kayshawn Butte. They need to get Deion Smith, the talented freshman, as well involved on the outside. Too much speed to not be utilizing it. Run heavy. No, Johnson delivers to Butte. And that's his first catch since the first quarter. But Tom, that's a perfect example right there. What we were talking to Jake Peets about. I mean, even you thought that was a run play. And with everybody saying the lack of run plays that have been called, some of those have to still be called run plays when you're charting out what LSU does offensively. Because it was a called run, it just ends up being a throw. 36 plays tonight, 20 of them on the ground. This time they will run it. And straight ahead, it's Tyrion Davis Price for seven. Great start to this drive already. Getting Jake Peets in a very, very 
good position here on second short. Can take a shot if he wants to or lean back into the run game. Here's Johnson with the rollout. The lefty goes right and finds Butte again. New left tackle in for LSU. Cam Wire is now playing over that side after Anthony Bradford started the game. Yeah, Bradford, the talented sophomore, just had his hands full. All right, Josh Pascal has been amazing on that side of the offensive line. And given that left tackle position fits. And he's got Pascal right in front of him now. Davis Price runs the opposite way. Huge hole. Plenty of room. Good blocking. And down inside the 10, Deion Smith, the freshman, paved the way for him. A pickup of 30. We mentioned the run game. We talked about tight ends getting involved. Watch the block here by Jack Mashburn. He's going to get right up onto Trey Wallace. Excuse me, Trevin Wallace. You get defenders, excuse me, you get your guys to the second level. That's when those runs start to hit big. Went for 30, longest rush of the season for LSU. Butte, nowhere to go. Loss of yardage. Two yards the wrong way, Jacquez Jones. For this defense, the transfer from Ole Miss came in, picked up the system extremely fast, makes all the calls, and has allowed DeAndre Square right next to him to play faster and at a higher level as well. Kiner now the running back. Pressure. Johnson got it away. Down to the one gives Devontae Lee. Johnson standing tall in the pocket. They will hurry to the line and now bring in the bigs. Kentucky will have time to sub. Three tight ends, Taylor, Besh, and Mashburn. High formation. Davis Price, nope, we got a whistle before the play started. Kentucky. Kentucky uses a timeout with LSU looking at a pivotal third and goal down 21 nothing good for Kentucky tonight at Kroger Field they just featured a proposal on the video board she said yes he's high-fiving everybody I don't even think he's hugged her yet <laughs> and Ogeron could use a hug third and goal for his LSU team they're gonna stay big with an eye formation have to punch it in here. This place is going to go crazy if they force it to a fourth down. Stop Florida on fourth down last week to win the game. High leverage moment now. Davis Price tries a submarine, shoves forward, and he's stopped about a foot short. Fourth and goal. Got to go for it here. Feels like this could be the game. They go lighter now. Butte and Palmer in. There's a lot hinging on this one play for LSU. Misdirection. Touchdown! Davis Price after they fake the jet to Butte. Have we seen that play from LSU this year much? No. Just a little bit of eye candy, right? Bringing your best player, Kayshawn Boutte, across the formation at the snap. Causes those linebackers just to hesitate for half a second. And that's all you need down at the one-yard line. Great play call and great push up front by LSU to punch it in. LSU remains perfect in the red zone. Came into this weekend. Just one of nine teams in college football to be so. Point after is good. LSU desperately needed a score. They drive 75 yards and cold. They mostly did it with the power run game. Well, you mentioned power. Power was the actual play, pulling that backside tackle, backside guard. The gap scheme runs have been exceptional 
for LSU. And remember, we talked to Ed Orgeron. He talked to us about going back to 2019. He said, hey, guys, we had one run play. It was inside zone. I felt like they were going to be zone heavy against this football team. But the gap scheme runs, the pin and pull, blocking back and pulling offensive linemen around have what's really been successful, especially here in the second half for LSU in the run game. Why did that play specifically work? Because Honestly, this, I'm sorry, Jordan, I'm, yeah. I'll get in quick. Because this Kentucky defense is heavy handed as hell. And you're not going to push them around. So you've got to take advantage of where they are and try to get around them, honestly. Brett White and Mark Soups do not look happy at this moment. Either somebody on the headset or somebody in stripes. The eye candy was the difference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just a, a little hesitation, right? Those linebackers are always going to be the ones that fill the gaps down there in the low red zone on the one yard line. Hesitate them where we're second with that motion and get right in. So, as pivotal as that fourth and goal play was for LSU, Kentucky up two touchdowns. The Cats have an opportunity with their run game to run a lot of clock. Brad White, the defensive coordinator, talking it over on the sideline. And how does the play calling for Liam Cohen change based on game situation now? It, it shouldn't, right? I mean, this offense is predicated on committing to the run to open up the downfield passing. So, force LSU to add another defender to the box. And then those throws downfield will open up. But they haven't stopped the run yet, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Levis busts the play. Somebody went the wrong direction, and he'll bust it for a gain. Picked up six after either turning the wrong direction or Wondell Robinson vacated. No, Levis was wrong there. He went the wrong direction, but a great job. You're taught as a quarterback. You go the wrong way, fill the hole, right? Where's the run supposed to go? Find it. Chris Rodriguez picks up a little shove there to open up a hole, but that just shows you the athleticism. And even after a little mistake, having the wherewithal to go, wait, I'm supposed to go this way, bam, get downhill. And that was your extra defender making first contact. Cats have rushed for 194 yards tonight. There's the toss to Wondell Robinson. Turn the corner. Picked up eight. So LSU is rolling an extra defender. They're rolling a safety down that last play. They were in man coverage on the outside with one safety high. So they are selling out to stop the run. This is when the explosive play action pass can happen. The closer these LSU defenders get to the line of scrimmage. Look at the man coverage up top, one safety over the top. Levis gives it up. And a fall forward from Chris Rodriguez, Jr. Talking with Durante Jones, defensive coordinator for LSU. He was complimentary of the way LSU's, or pardon me, Kentucky's running backs always seem to be falling forward. There's extra yardage at the end of runs. For yeah, how special is Chris Rodriguez? I mean, at times, how overlooked is he in this conference and across the country? He's one of the best backs in the entire country. Doesn't get the credit he deserves. Averaging nearly nine yards a touch tonight. When will the deep shot come? Here's Rodriguez. And he's going to carry white jerseys with him down to the 41. 11 yards at the carry. Boy, it's the illusion of complexity. <laughs> Well, Luke, if Luke Fortner can just pick you up and carry another five yards. It's a catch and release program for Fortner. He caught Rodriguez and then released him after he picked up another five. Four forty five left in the third quarter. Dale Rosenthal, the left tackle, the LSU transfer. Will come out for at least a play. I mentioned the illusion of complexity, right? We talked to Liam Cohen a lot about the Sean McVay system. It has roots in the John Gruden pass game, right? The yep. verbiage and the pass concepts of John Gruden. They mix in there the Mike Shanahan run game. And then you start to add the eye candy, right? The shifts, the motions, the stuff that causes the eye violations, causes the defense to hesitate 
and it looks complex to the defense, but it's just gap scheme, some zone, some play action. Not overly complex to the offense, but definitely to the defense. Liam Cohen had some extra eyes at practice helping him out this week. And in the film room is that Tim, his high school coach, is in town. Mondell Robinson with the grab. He's been in town for a week. Spent some time with him at practice on Thursday. He said, I've never been to Kentucky before. I absolutely love this place. Now, Liam may have been concerned that Dad was just going to flat move in because he's having so much fun after the win against Florida. And here, they ran a, he ran a wing teen high school until his senior year. His dad said, we knew we had to change it up, put him in shotgun. And he had a remarkable playing career at UMass. Second down three smoke is in the backfield now. Here's Robinson moving. Cavassier smoke. To the 20. I mean I got to be honest this is just a Kentucky team imposing its will on LSU. Remember something Durante Jones told us Tom a couple of weeks ago. Motion causes emotion. The LSU linebackers fly to the left side of the line of scrimmage because of the motion that came with that play, and that allowed the inside zone to cut right back inside. Nobody's home. Kavashi Smoke gets a couple. Damone Clark with the stop. Kentucky has eaten up more than three and a half minutes off the clock. Part of this seven play, 57 yard drive. 230 yards tonight on the ground for the Wildcats. That is a loaded stable. Rodriguez, smoke. We saw the Tom McLean earlier tonight. Late movement for LSU. Keep an eye on Wandell Robinson up there. It's going to get man coverage. Lev is going to keep it with his own read. Gain of five. Levis is averaging seven yards a carry. What, this, it almost feels like if they were in fourth and short, they'd go for it. So I'm not so sure they might not just hand it off here. Yeah. Like, and they got two, right? The way this run game's going, how aggressive Stoops have been. Watch the throw. Long one. Broke it up, and it could have been intercepted. If Darren Evans had turned in and said he turned out, it'll be a flag, and that'll bring an automatic first down. A little bit of a late throw. Pass interference on the defense. Number two. The ball replaced at the spot foul. Automatic first down. I tell you what, that, that's that's really tough on Evans because the ball was thrown behind Robinson. Yeah. Like he was in a good position for coverage if the ball was out in front of Robinson. It was behind them. Robinson turns to try to turn for the ball right into Evans. I mean, a, a better pass and he's in better position. 100% better pass. He probably breaks it up. So he really didn't do anything wrong there. Just. It's just that nothing's gone right for LSU yeah. tonight. First and goal, Kentucky. Rodriguez lowers his shoulder for another couple. It's a gain of five. It's not complex, but you shift, you motion, and then you run. You give the defense, the linebackers, the safeties, two or three things to look at before you snap the ball. It's just split zone. It's just zone concepts. But you're giving this defense so much to think about and look at pre-snap that they're just late. Well, they've gone in motion on six of the nine plays this drive, and they'll do it again. Levis will keep it. Touchdown, Kentucky.
Five and a half minutes of game time ago, LSU converted a fourth and goal to get on the scoreboard for the first time. It seemed like a pivotal moment. Kentucky had an answer. It was Will Levis in this run game. Ten plays, 75 yards later. It's once again a 21-point lead for Kentucky. Cats are battering the Tigers in Lexington tonight. SEC Saturday night is presented by T-Mobile. Waka Flocka was right. It's a party. Repeat that three times. Well, this sets up for a big showdown for the Cats next week if they can hold on. Let's look at our road to the championship brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Bama with its hands full tonight against Texas A&M. But elsewhere, Georgia had no such issues with Auburn. Stetson Bennett, the fourth, delivered again. 231 yards, couple of touchdowns. And next week, it's an afternoon matchup between the Hedges. Kentucky's ranking will improve. Georgia's might. Yeah. That's going to be a heck of a matchup. Max Johnson on the rollout. Out of the backfield able to complete it you know coming into this game we, we had all talked in a production meeting last night and our great producer Bill Palladino said why don't you guys talk about Kentucky's odds to beat Georgia next week and Cole said something along the lines of because that will be a very short conversation that was last night I really feel after watching Kentucky's offense tonight the feeling around this program and the possibility of going into Athens and getting a win has changed dramatically. Am I crazy? No, I think so. I mean, a, a team that plays with a fearless sense of confidence is a dangerous team, especially when you can run the football well. Your offensive front's playing well. You have a quarterback now that's using his feet. It's dynamic. Defense is playing. Yes. Georgia's really good on defense. Elite. Elite. Here's Davis Price with a run to the outside. It will go for an LSU first down. But Kentucky, Kentucky's a bunch of fighters. There's two things about this team that have been different the last two weeks, though. Flags and turnovers. Yeah. And if that part cleans itself up the way that it has, then I do think it's a little bit of a different conversation. There's one penalty against Kentucky tonight. Holding, number 16 in the offense. And one of the best plays of the night wiped off the board for LSU. And Devontae Lee on the outside working on Yusuf Corker. Oh. When the shoulder pad gets exposed, yeah. it's a pretty good hit. That's yeah, a bummer, too, because I'm not sure Corker had enough speed to get there, but the race is a huge play for LSU. Clack will run out on the third quarter. It remains to be seen what the clock looks like. Bigger picture for this LSU program. They've got one quarter to try and mount a massive comeback. This has been all Kentucky. You ever watch those home improvement shows? You ever been part of one, maybe? Oh, yeah. I feel like Mark Stoops has had that going here in Kentucky. Maybe a love it or list it feeling. He starts to build for the foundation for this program. They turn it into this beautiful mansion, and he has an opportunity to say, am I going to continue investing in this, or I'm going to list it and maybe go find a, a better house down the street, different neighborhood. Well, when you roll up with Wondell Robinson and Will Levis, you're undefeated, have a chance to move to 6-0. and It certainly seems like he's loving it. And he's building a cash pad right now. That was he's going to make some money if he keeps coaching <laughs> Kentucky this way. <laughs> Jeray Jenkins with the catch. It's a pickup of 15, much needed for LSU. Cole talked about what happened in our production meeting. Has your view changed about Kentucky's odds next week going into Athens? Like I said, I think with the turnovers and penalties, that part has changed a little bit. This offense will continue to grow. We also talked to Coach Stoops about the fact that some teams learn how to win games. And I do think that's a trait that a team can learn. And then on top of that, this is now a Stetson Bennett conversation, it feels like, not one that might not include JT Daniels. Second string quarterback for Georgia has been starting recently. Jackson lobs one down the field. Too much for Besh. 
So if that's the case, Tom, then yeah, I think it does. If that's who we're talking about playing quarterback next week. Second in program history with 54 wins. Only he and Bear Bryant have started 3 0 in SEC play multiple times as Kentucky's head coach. Davis Price stop. Jacquez Jones. It'll be third down. Kroger Field is loud and getting louder. Two best receivers for LSU at the top of the screen. Kayshawn Boutte and Jack Besh. I'm Max Johnson. I'm working in that direction. They need eight. Here comes the blitz. Incomplete. There is so much hanging in the balance for LSU, not only in this game, but for Ed Ogeron's future as head coach. Fourth and eight, down 21 in the fourth quarter. You got to go for it. Got to go for it. And again, that play right there, mirrored routes on both sides. If I'm picking a side, I'm picking the side with Kayshawn Boutte or Jack Besh. Those are the guys that have been making plays for you. Let's see if Max Johnson finds one of them here on fourth down. Sean Boutte in the slot. Four man rush. Johnson will leave the pocket. Nobody's open. Incomplete. A turnover on downs in Kentucky's defense with a huge fourth down stop. I don't know if the party's ever going to stop. Kentucky has just flat beat up on LSU tonight. Yeah, it's been a physical game, a Kentucky-style game. This is what they want. This is their identity moving forward on both sides of the football, running the football with physicality and physicality on the defensive front, getting after the quarterback. That's been the story of this game. At least Fury Wilder will feature some answers. They beefed up for that fight, too. Both of them heavier than they were for the second fight. Levis slant complete. Wondell Robinson. 16 yards. What a difference maker Wondell Robinson has been to this Kentucky team. Yeah, this is the matchup I highlighted to start the game. Wondell Robinson on Cordell Flott. LSU in man coverage because they're having to add a safety into the box to try to slow down the run. And it's just really tough to cover Wondell Robinson with a two-way go in the slot in man coverage. Here's Cavassier Smoke. Here's another Kentucky first down. 16 yards for the junior from Wetumpka, Alabama. Pick up of 15 yards and another first down. I feel like the one thing Ed Ogeron specifically, but LSU couldn't afford tonight, was this. 28-7, Kentucky threatening to go up even more, and he's well aware of the outside noise, the rumors, the rumblings, the pressure. He said, listen, I'm from this state. I know how important it is to win at LSU. Wide open, Jatan McLean. Kentucky piling it on. Levis only needed a minute 19 to navigate 56 yards and get it in the end zone. Levis has thrown for three touchdowns on 14 of 17 passing. Kentucky up 35-7. Boy, we talked about eye candy, right? Look at everything Jay Ward has to see. You're going to see a guard pull. You're going to see a running back come across, and then you're going to see McLean sneak down on a wheel route. 
right past Jay Ward. He's got two things to look at right in front of him in Kentucky, piling it on. 35-7. LSU got the last lap winning the national championship. This one going in a much different direction. No overtime needed. Cole, you talked with Ed Ogeron at halftime. What do you think is going through his mind right now? I think he's frustrated right now. I think he thought his team would come out with a little bit more fight. I thought he thought his team would come out and execute a little bit better. You guys were in the meeting with him yesterday like I was. I thought there was some confidence with Coach Ogeron. You mentioned the Florida game in 17 that he referenced back to Tom. He thought his team would come out and be able to put together a better game plan and a better performance than this tonight. Complete. Besh was caught short. Well, Ed Ogeron took over for Les Miles. It was a return home to Louisiana native. 48 16 as a head coach, 2019 national championship, and he was AP national coach of the year. They had a loaded squad that was put together by Ogeron and his staff. Dave Aranda goes to Baylor, and he loses his offensive coordinator to the NFL has gone through multiple defensive coordinators the last two years. We got a flag likely holding on an incomplete pass. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 99 on the defense. 15-yard oh. penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That'll help LSU. Everybody knew when Ed Ogeron got this job that when he put together a great staff and was the CEO and motivator of this team, he had guys that could run their sides of the ball. He, he seems to be much more hands-on this year, and we've seen it, in fact, at practice. Yeah, and that's not when he's at his best. He's at his best when he can focus solely on the culture, the preparation, the mental preparation, the attitude of this football team. But right now, you're right. He's had to dip into the offensive side of the ball to try to dictate what they're doing and get them to look a little bit more like what he's expecting. So his focus has been a little bit away from the pulse of this team and preparing them mentally and physically for the games. And, and we could sense the frustration. It's been obvious yeah. what they're not executing, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Davis Price will run for a first down. And Cole, when you speak about Ed Ogeron as a motivator, that is a true skill. They have a Friday 3 o'clock meeting on home game weeks where it's one team, one heartbeat. They're bringing somebody to bang the big bass drum. We had a chance to sit in that team meeting a few weeks ago, and it is unquestionably a great motivating tactic, and he has so many of those. Johnson flush, throws behind the line of scrimmage, deep, open. That is caught for a touchdown. What a grab by Malik Neighbors. LSU still has fight on a 41-yard strike from Johnson. Kentucky was sitting back in a cover four look, so they're playing deep and over the top. It's a great job by Max Johnson to buy time and keep his eyes downfield. Really just throw a jump ball here down to Neighbors, who came into this game with only four receptions on the season. The freshman, though, goes up and makes a great play. Well, that was quick. Four plays, 75 yards. And we're four minutes into this fourth quarter. So the question begins now. Uh, LSU desperate times, desperate measures, right? They're down big. They just got to score. Do they have firepower to make this thing interesting here late? I mean, they do. They have the dudes on the outside. They have Max Johnson, who is a good quarterback. But Kentucky's been controlling the game, right? Are, are we thinking that Kentucky's all of a sudden going to stall on offense? They haven't all right. the whole night. LSU hasn't been able to stop them. So really, yeah, the offense has it. But the defense needs to come up with the stop. Cole, are you surprised with the way Kentucky's offensive line has imposed its will on LSU in the ground game tonight? No, not really. Because I think there are a lot of there are a lot of intangibles with how I figured this run game would be implemented with what we saw Chip Kelly do with UCLA's plan in week one. And then we saw 
Mike Bobo and Coach Harson take a little bit of that with Auburn's plan last week. Almost every team that they've played has implemented more motion, more shifts, different formations, just to try to get this front seven either out of place or misaligned. And you just knew Liam Coleman was going to have more of it tonight. There's a lot of it that was already built in. Yeah. That they were going to add to it and make it even more complicated than they have. And this is a physical group, American Muscle, like we talked about this morning. Kentucky's got it, man. I mean, they are a big, bad group up front. Kentucky uses a timeout before the uh, kickoff here as we get a chance to look at our hometown connection brought to you by Team Holden. Each week, we'll highlight a team's connection to towns across the SEC, and we don't have to go far to find the talent locally here in the Commonwealth. Mundell Robinson is from Frankfort, Kentucky, just about 30 miles away from Kroger Field. First went to Nebraska, two years there playing for Scott Frost, wanted to be closer to his family. And so Mundell Robinson with his mom fighting multiple health issues moves back home. This guy was Kentucky Mr. Football. And Cole, in this day and age of name, image, and likeness deals where players are cashing in, Wandell is taking that and he's putting a lot of it towards a greater cause. Absolutely. His father, Dale Robinson, started the Wanda Joyce Robinson Foundation. He's convicted of selling drugs and had to do a 10-year prison sentence. And I talked to Dale Robinson earlier today about just the difficulties of that. And he said, while I was serving my sentence, I realized, asked myself, how many other kids are in this position? Like my son, Wandell, was with his mom and a father who's incarcerated and wanted to try to make a change and try to help others with that moving forward. So he was able to do that. He said, I turned my cell into a classroom. I studied as much as I could, did everything that I could, got out, couldn't find a job. So he started a gym inside of his garage. Onside kick for LSU. No, they will punt it away. A kick it away, excuse me. And no return. Start a gym inside of his garage, Tom, and has taken that off. Amy Nance, who actually works for the Kentucky school system, was his first customer inside of his garage. She's now the president of the foundation and somebody that's helped him grow that and said, see, still today, still looking for a lot of help, still looking for a lot of support, but some of the NIL money that Wandell Robinson is going to receive is going to go directly to the Wanda Joyce Robinson Foundation. It's named after Wandell's grandmother, Dale's mother, who worked for Kentucky State University. And Dale told me today that one thing that she did when she worked there was she would not let any kids go hungry. There were a lot of young men that came in and couldn't afford lunches, and she wasn't going to let that happen. She risked her job to make sure every student was going to be able to eat, and that's why he inspired her to start this foundation. Well, that's a great story. He's a fantastic player, has a million-dollar smile, and an incredible future. His dad said, I started the gym in the garage, and sometimes one person would show up, sometimes two, sometimes nobody. So, hey, Cole. What was his workout of the day today? Did you ask him? I don't know, but when I went over and shook his hand and hugged him and talked to him a little bit before the game, I can guarantee you he got one. <laughs> I know he's at Keeneland a little bit earlier, but he hit the weights at some point because he, he cut off the circulation in my hand when he shook my hand. Dude, he's absolutely jacked. Should have been in the Trans Am with you this morning. Second and nine. Here's Cavassier Smoke. He would have pulled off sleeveless a lot better than I would have. I think. Damone Clark with the stop. It's a huge third down here. LSU came out. Great play there by Ali Gay to force that run to bounce. Third long here. LSU can stop them, get the ball back. It starts to become interesting again, right? Yeah. There's Dale in the number one jersey. Far right. Thought LSU would have tried to execute the onside kick, but they turn it over to the defense. We need to stop here. Pressure coming. Levis reaches, and we got a flag coming from the backside. Injured LSU player, Ali Gay, who was in the backfield. Holding, holding, number 65 on the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Reset the game clock to nine minutes, 36 seconds. Nine, three, six. They're holding that right arm very gingerly. They're trying to stabilize it as they walk off the field. They do 
can see Micah Baskerville on the left side of your screen on the blitz and Ali Gay right there working on Darian Kennard. I think his fingers got caught in a face mask. Yeah. He reached up to go with his right hand and didn't do anything after the fingers went into the face mask. Uh, face mask. It'll be the first three and out for either team tonight. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm gonna not surprising for Kentucky, but it'll Interesting, LSU hasn't had a three now. Here's Colin Goodfellow to punt it away. Milk every second on this clock. Get it down under nine minutes. Fair catch by Palmer. Eight minutes, 53 seconds remaining in this game. Kentucky up by 21. Yeah, moments ago from Devon A. Chain, they're up two touchdowns, guys. All right, Dari, thanks. 31 17, Alabama. Or, pardon me, AM at Kyle Field. Here's Max Johnson. Chased, goes back across the grain. Besh swings free, but quickly, Black Jersey's there to take him down. Dangerous throw there by Max Johnson. Did him well to keep his eyes downfield last time outside the pocket. That time, risky throw, but hey, when you're down this many scores, got to try to get anything going. Johnson wants to load up. Sideline shot. It is broken up. By Quandre Mosley, who's had a couple of those tonight. Intended receiver is Brian Thomas Jr. This will be third and six coming up. And a really good job by Mosley. His right hand here splitting the hands of Brian Thomas right there. Shoves inside. Johnson complete. First down. It's Neighbors again who had the 41 yard touchdown reception. Again, these passes are okay if you're Kentucky, right? You want to play deep over the top, zone coverage, let LSU complete a few underneath, let them milk the clock as much as possible. Can't give up those chunk plays if you're Kentucky. Johnson live sideline. Boutte. Caught it was the inbounds. What a catch by Keyshawn Boutte. He is shaken up on the sideline after a 37 yard catch. And it's his left ankle or his right ankle. Man, oh man. A highlight real catch. In an injury on the completion. It's just an unbelievable catch on the sideline. That's it's your best player for LSU. Coach O knows it. You can see the concern all over his face. So there with, without Derek Stingley on the defensive side of the ball. And it might be without Butte. a lot of force on that right foot as he turned his body all that weight on that right foot as he landed in bounds it, it, it wasn't an ankle twist like I expected yeah. but maybe more towards the back towards the yeah. Achilles contorting his body that way watch that right foot Ew. yeah yeah, a lot of weight hit mm -hmm. the back of that foot there. He has been a sensation for LSU. Seven consecutive games of the touchdown, tied for the longest stretch in school history with guys like Jarvis Landry, Dwayne Bowe. 127 yards in a score. Is Auburn last week. He's in the tent. Half a quarter to play. Spin move, Davis Price. Into Yusuf Corker for a gain of six.
Johnson in zone through the hands of Brian Thomas. I love the idea here. You lose Kayshawn Butte, your next best guy is Jack Besh, but Brian Thomas, 6'5 on the outside. Try to throw him a jump ball, let him climb the ladder. That's an accurate pass and one that Thomas probably should have caught. Here's Jeray Jenkins. Oh, pardon me. That's Brian Thomas Jr. again. And that'll set up fourth and two. Every play has been huge for Ed Ogeron and LSU tonight. LSU bringing two tight ends. Two needed. Davis Price gets him. And that'll be a first and ten from just outside the ten. Big first down pickup, but if you're LSU, you're looking at that clock just ticking down and down. Got to score quick. I expect a few shots in the end zone right here. Johnson looking that way now. Back of the end zone. Incomplete. Trying to find neighbors. Devontae Robinson was back there on him. This will be the 10th play of the drive. Two receivers kind of in the same area. Don't want to see that as a quarterback. Not sure if it's the wrong route or what, but you know, nobody lined up over Besh. Davis Price shuffles his way down to the two. It's just interesting where the spot is. It's third and short. Third and short. You can still get a first down without a touchdown. Davis Price will get the first. Oh, he's in. Touchdown from the far side. And LSU punches it in from two yards out. What you had to do, your LSU, get points on the board. You took a little more time off the clock than you would have liked, but you ended up getting the touchdown. Extra point here will make it a two-score game. I'd imagine an onside kick. You got to timeouts. Yeah, got to. Took him 324 to get down the field. Point after is good. LSU. Scratching and clawing here in the fourth quarter. Tigers have outscored the Cats 14 to 7 in the fourth. Find themselves trailing by 14. But with a chance here, certainly at Kyle Field. All right, we got an outside kick situation here. LSU trying to get the ball back. They will not. That was covered by Rick fairly easily. And in uh, the news getting grimmer for LSU, Cole, what did you see with Keyshawn Butte? He came out of the injury tent, got on the cart. They're taking him back for an x-ray. They have an x-ray machine here at Kroger Field. And it's not the same ankle that he rolled earlier in the game. It is a second ankle injury for Keyshawn Butte, but it's the opposite ankle that he actually rolled in the first quarter. Time for the national lead with touchdown receptions. Stingley out likely for the season. We don't think we'll see him in an LSU uniform again. Burns out, Evans out tonight. And oh, by the way, it's just a toughest test you could imagine going forward for LSU. There is no rest for the weary in the SEC West. And LSU schedule is a doozy. Down 14 now. He has stopped to get the ball back. Regardless of what happens here, here's what's next. Get Ole Miss.
after Florida. Two different styles, and oh, by the way, Alabama and Arkansas. And m too, looking much improved tonight against Alabama. What's the next term up from Gauntlet? I don't know. Neither do I. That's why I asked you. <laughs> I mean, Gauntlet seems pretty serious. Second of five. Special thanks to Wheels Up for helping make travel easier for Jordan. On uh, every weekday weekend, getting from SEC Nation to our game on Saturday night. Quick trip today. Yeah. Just from the library on campus. I think they slapped a sticker on a golf cart. <laughs> Drove me on over. I could have given you a ride. <laughs> Took the tee tops off and everything. Big first down, Chris Rodriguez Jr. Gain of 14. And now LSU's gonna need something really weird to happen. It's just been the story of the night, right? I mean, initial penetration there by LSU, but then over pursuit by their linebackers, and Chris Rodriguez found that seam and hit it vertical with speed. That's, that's what makes Kentucky so hard, right? Those outside zones, those zone plays are supposed to hit wide, you get overplay by the linebackers, and that opens up those holes. Another physical run. Let's take a look at a five-star play of the game. Brought to you by Yellowwood. <laughs> this is grown man stuff right here. Will Levis, I mean. Just running into, running through, running around every LSU defender all the way down inside the 10 yard line. Boy, what a gutsy effort by seven tonight. I think it was a physical, he's going to be sore tomorrow. This yeah. has been a physical football game. But I tell you what, his confidence, his style of play has really elevated the confidence of this team and what Liam Cohen's able to dial up to help them be successful. You think there'll be a long line for his autograph signing tomorrow? Yeah, I think there'll be a few people. Yeah, yeah. Put that on his social media. We asked him about his social media. It's so creative and direct and engaging. He said, well, my mom has given me some advice. She said, you probably need to be 80% Tom Brady and 20% Gronk. He might be a little, a little heavier on the, on the Gronk side. And I love it, right? That's what I love about college football NIL stuff get to know these personalities these players a little bit more as they're incentivized to open up more and more of their life on social media that hole opened up for Rodriguez touchdown Kentucky time Kentucky beat an SEC opponent by 28 or more was Vanderbilt in 1998. 106 off the clock that time. One after good. Leaves 21. It would be the second largest against LSU all time for Kentucky. Anytime you get an offensive lineman running, trying to find somebody to block, that's yeah, going to be a pretty good play, and that's kind of the way it's been all night for Kentucky. The run game has been dominant. 311 rushing yards, second most allowed by LSU under Ogeron, going back to Ole Miss in 2019. That's what the post-it note says. What does that stat tell you about both of these programs and where they are tonight? Uh, it tells me about this, the, the strides that Kentucky is making in physicality, in recruiting. This is a staple of this team and a Mark Stoops football team is physicality, and it tells me that LSU right now being headed in the wrong direction. Yeah. yeah, that's not a good sign, right? 
when Mark Stoops took over this program and they were very patient with him at the outset two wins five wins five wins he said it was simple the first thing we had to do is we had to get SEC size up front offensive line defensive line and they did that the recruiting philosophy as the northernmost SEC school to go into Big Ten territory one of places Mark Stoops is familiar with from Ohio to Michigan of course he played at Iowa and they got that beef up front and Cole a big part of that still lives on today in the memory of John Schlarman and that big blue wall there's zero doubt about it it was so cool to see the mural that they got here outside of the stadium I got to talk to a couple of his children they were out here on the field coach Stoops was walking around with them today his spirit lives within this program there's zero doubt about it he's a part of what brought the physicality that was the blueprint for what Mark Stoops has built here inside Kentucky football and we talked about it a little bit on nation this morning the technique the fundamentals of how to play that position and I still hear from guys like Drake Jackson I still hear from some of those offensive linemen that played for John Schlarman and they talk about how he set the tone set the foundation got things rolling for what they're going to be and that's that I mean that offensive line I think is the heartbeat of this football team there are a lot of other individuals that we can point to Joshua Pascal does some amazing things but Kentucky football goes as their offensive line goes in my opinion well, let's talk Pascal for a moment as they get a big run from Davis Price. Josh Pascal is a cancer survivor and they're having a great year in 2018. He's at home watching going through cancer treatments. He doesn't have the full use of his foot where they uh, found the cancer. He also doesn't have the use of a car anymore. That one's a long completion to the outside B because he spent so much time at the football facility. He decided in July. Why do I need a car? Why do I have to pay insurance and for parking and all this other stuff? I can just walk to the facility and I spend most of my time there anyway. This guy's a grinder. Yeah, he's there early in the morning. He leaves late at night. He's like, I don't need to go anywhere else. I eat here. I practically sleep here. And he's also flying around town on one of those bird scooters. That's uh. 300 plus pounds coming down the street. I don't know what the weight limit on those things are. Like, I might need to check that. Oh, it just shows you the dedication, the maturity, the focus of Josh Pascal, and he has really anchored this defense tonight. He's been all over the place. Blocked the field goal against Florida last week to key their win. Davis Price has been battling tonight. He takes a hit right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one. It's going to be third and long. There was an injured player for Kentucky, so they stopped play to make sure he was off the field. Yusuf Corker. And in fact, he is still down on that Kentucky sideline. Oh, pardon me, that's DeAndre Square. The time team captain, senior from Detroit. LSU's been 500 and third downs tonight, 7 of 14. Green man rush. Johnson. Inner! No! Andre Mosley was about to bring the roof down. One that Max Johnson stares down a little bit, puts too much air. Kentucky sitting back in a soft zone with all eyes on the quarterback, and you're right. I mean, he was some sticky gloves away from this place going absolutely bananas. Pascal working on Shanahan now. Fourth down. Johnson had bench for a moment. Now he's covered, and now Johnson goes down. Another sack for Kentucky, fourth of the night for the Wildcats. And they force a turnover on downs, and they'll get three minutes and one second to rev up the party. It was interesting. Wow. How about playing Colin Baton Rouge at Kroger Field? Ooh. 
little, little shade? A little bit. They know the words better. Down to Death Valley. It was interesting when we were talking to Mark Stoops yesterday. He was very honest. And he said, look, we're not going to blow many teams out. Yeah, it's just not who we are, right? We're, we're a team that's going to need to win close games. Well, look up at that scoreboard. Maybe this is an offense that can consistently put up 30, 40 points. If it, if it is, if that's the direction they're trending, look out. Well, we said coming in, there's a lot of room for improvement with the Kentucky offense. They made a major leap tonight. Huge, and, and yeah, it may be slower than Kentucky fans or us media members look at and would like to happen, but you got a quarterback that's never been in this system, an offensive coordinator that is a new offensive coordinator yeah. in general, coming to the college ranks from the NFL. There are a lot of pieces that needed to come together, and they're coming together now. One of the ways Liam Cohen reintroduced those pieces to Will Levis is they went back and they watched film of his first couple of games. When he was really cruising the offense, uh, had some big games and he said let's just reintroduce you to what it looks like when your mechanics are right and things are going well the psychology of football the psychology of being an athlete right positive visualization confidence it's it's the stuff you can't put your finger on but it it, it makes guys take a next step it makes guys play at a level that maybe they haven't before now the question is what level is Kentucky at do they belong in the same conversation with Alabama and Georgia, the three remaining undefeateds in the SEC? We'll find out next week. By the way, AM leads Alabama 31 to 27 in the fourth. If you had, if that holds, and you had Alabama losing a game before Kentucky, uh, go play the lottery, my friend. Yeah. Look, Kentucky tonight, yeah, they showed me that they deserve to be in that conversation. Do I think they're better than Alabama and Georgia right now? No. But this is a talented LSU football team that they're just pushing around. QB sneak uh, flag, but it would have been converted. Cole on the other side for LSU. How is Ed Ogeron's future impacted by one single game tonight and the result of this one? I don't think you can sit here and say that it's not going to be. Number 65 on the off. Have your own penalty. Third down. That it's not going to have significant ramifications, Tom. We, we, we all talked about coming into this game, if it looked this way, if it looked that way, if it went this direction, that direction. I think this is one of those directions that a lot of the decision makers are going to look at and say, we don't like what we're seeing. It's the optics of it, right? I mean, it's the way. It's not just the score, but it's the manner in which you looked. You got physically dominated by Kentucky. I think that's, that's what makes... <laughs> this, this is a tough pill to swallow for Joe Joe. Here's Will Levis again. Mingio likes that slide. It's a Kentucky first down. And some tough questions to answer for LSU. And their athletic director, Scott Woodward, on the flight back to Baton Rouge tonight. How about that young man right there? At Penn State, not a starter. Confidence. I was talking to him yesterday. His confidence was low. Transfers to a place that he's expected to be the guy. A lot of pressure on him, and he has answered the bell. Will Levis has helped take this Kentucky program to another step. Victory formation for Kentucky. Levis, magnificent. Accounted for five touchdowns. The only Kentucky player over the last quarter century with three passing touchdowns and multiple rushing touchdowns in the same game. Mark Stoops was all business this week. His program remained focused even after the big win against Florida. And the Cats are going to go to 6-0. and They'll be all business this week after smiles tonight. A trip between the hedges awaits Kentucky. Be quite a few coaches, I think, that'll celebrate this one, but probably flip on some Georgia tape tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because everything they wanted is in front of them. Everything. An undefeated season, a chance to win the East, and it'll boil down to the next trip. We'll see what Ed Ogeron's future holds. But there's no question that Mark Stoops has this Kentucky program not just 
pushing in the right direction, but flying high tonight. 475 yards of offense for Kentucky. It's almost like you watch Will Levis play, and it is the same mold of person and toughness that his head coach reflects. Uh, let's go down to that head coach, Mark Stoops, and by with Cole. Coach Stoops, this football program is 6 0 for the first time since 1950, second time in school history. How does that make you feel? That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm uh, very happy. That's a hell of a start. We talked before the game and with you yesterday about teams that find ways to win game. This wasn't finding a way to win game. This was yeah. domination. It, it was. I really would have liked to have finished a little stronger in the fourth quarter there. We got a little thin um, late in the game with a couple injuries, but overall, yeah, couldn't be more proud of the coaches and the players and playing really good football. And for a large portion of this game, we were doing some really good things. We, we know what a lot of the foundation of your program is, toughness, physicality, but we also talked to you about playing clean football. This is two games in a row your team's been pretty clean. Do you feel yourself sort of moving over that hurdle? I did. I, I, I really felt good. Uh, and confident that we were going to get better and better. I really thought Will was very good early in this game. You know, just uh, the little things he was doing well. And we were moving the ball, and so uh, and the ball security has been much better. Uh, so, yes, we're playing much more uh, clean football. Coach Tubbs, Kentucky fans see Will throw the football. They see him run. They see him bounce off tacklers. Take BBN inside of who he is and why he makes his program better. Well, I think everybody has a lot of confidence in him. You see the way he... Uh, runs and puts his shoulder down makes tough yards but he also has a ton of talent and he has the leadership uh, qualities that we're looking for so he's uh, very believable going to be able to get outside and get that cigar tonight <laughs> you know it Thanks, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> oh the celebration is going strong you know the sec when it comes to football it's like a telenova every game is a story every moment creates drama on both sides of the field Fred Ogeron, it's a much different feeling than what Mark Stoops is going through tonight. Let's get you to the studio. Here's Dari. No, 